Hi guys, in this video I wish to explain uh, the Wyckoff method uh, or the Wyckoff approach to investing. And this is the simplest and easiest to understand explanation of the Wyckoff uh, theory in my opinion. I've checked out a few others. The other one that is quite good is the one that's on Binance. So this one right here is actually on the Bybit and Bybit is a crypto platform. Um, I, I'm actually referring to this uh, simply because, like I said, this is one of the best, uh, easy to understand, um, not not too technical explanations of the wake off method, and it's basically a uh, technical analysis that has a form of technical analysis to study the market and make an investment decision uh, that that has been around for decades uh, by a person uh, who developed it named Richard Wyckoff. So um, he developed this in the 1930s, and since then, you know, he has been, um, you know. Uh, you know, imparting this way of teaching, and over here it says that you know it works very well alongside the Dow theory and the other wave analysis. I've spoken on the other wave analysis before on my channel as well. And more importantly, the reason why I'm discussing this topic is because the wake off uh, uh, approach is very, very synonymous with. Um, something that we hear a lot these days, which is the smart money. And I've discussed that in my previous videos as well. So even for this case study that has been going on on the GBP USD, um, like I find that this is actually very, very applicable. So I'll be actually referring to that later in this video as well. So do, do stay tuned. So um, the reason why uh, he created uh, this, this method is that he also realized that uh, a lot of a lot of uh, in a different explanation of the wake off method, uh, they say that Richard created this uh, this approach because he realized that a lot of investors are getting fleeced by the market. So uh, by understanding these laws, we will be able to defend ourselves better against that, and uh, you know to to not um, to to not exit our trades to make way for uh, other investors to, to take them over. And that, that, that actually happens. So I'll explain it uh, as we go on with some case examples. So um, there are three Wyckoff laws that we need to know. One is the supply and demand. And this again has been uh, covered um, on this channel. And at the same time, there are a lot of supply and demand indicators available on the MetaTrader 4 platform and also on TradingView as well. And then there's the cause and effect, and there's also the law of effort and result. So we look into the first one, uh, the supply and demand. I've discussed this previously in this case study as well. So um, again, if the demand is greater than supply, then the price moves up. So why is the USD going up and up in the recent times? Well, we all can see that um, it's perceived to be a, a uh, risk avoidance currency. And this also has to do a lot with the, the bonds that are purchased between uh, banks and governments. And if the demand is lower than the supply, then the price goes down. And for a brief period, we also did see the, uh, the US dollar index uh, weakening this week. And as a result of that, uh, we also saw the price of USD briefly weaken against several currencies at the beginning of this week. And actually, uh, the close, the close of last week as well. All right, and then if the demand equals supply, there is no change in price. I would like to you just pay special attention to this last bit about demand equals supplies, uh, and not much of a change in price because that's going to be one key topic of um, uh, focus for. Uh, I, I I think it's something I want a lot of you guys to consider because. Uh, when you see the price staying still, it's actually also because money is changing hands. So, uh, more on that later. Okay, so let's go on to the cause and effect. Accumulation and distribution. Accumulation comes from a period of preparation, especially economic events. So, some of the key events that we, we know that affect uh, the market would be the producer price indexes, the consumer price index, um, ob obviously the, uh, the, the interest rate decisions and uh, the, the payrolls, these are all very key. The GDP figures, all these are very, very key economic events. So accumulation would lead to an uptrend 
and a distribution would result in a downtrend effect. And the law of effort and result is represented by trading volume. Okay, as we as we discuss this point, I would like you to you know uh, try and think of and visualize different trading scenarios that you may have come across in the past, and. I would like you to visualize maybe even before we go over to the charts, you might even be able to think of some scenarios where if you already have a habit of putting the volumes indicator on your various charts, whether it's TradingView or MetaTrader, and you have observed periods of time when uh, the volumes are very high, when there is big movement in the trading, but at the same time, there are also periods of time where there is very high volume when the price is staying within a range of maybe 20 to 50 pips or even like 20 to 75 pips depending on the currency pair. And then there are also periods of time conversely when when um, there is very little volume um, when, when there could be big movements or there could be no movement. So uh, why is that? Well that is actually really because of the law of effort and result. Okay. So we use the case of Bitcoin moving higher and consolidating. During the consolidating period, volume is high, but the price isn't reaching a new high. And this is a sign that the volume and price are not showing the same sentiment. So that, that you know, could actually signal um, a possibility of reversal to the current momentum. And, and, and this will actually take place uh, in the form of you know, a, a big price movement after a period of consolidation. Okay, uh, wake off price cycle. So, uh, the wake off uh, observes the activity of successful traders, the coin activity uh, to what it refers to as vertical and figure. Uh, okay, let's just, just jump into the whole thing. Okay, accumulation, markup, and markdown phase. Okay, and then uh, there is the distribution. Okay, distribution is obviously, you know, when, when um, you can you can call that as like you know profit taking. Uh, we see this a lot in gold. Um, there there have been massive swings in the price of gold the last couple of months, and that's why in a recent video as well I mentioned that uh, gold is really really good instrument for trading market manipulation. But uh, let's say if you were to invest in it, I, I do not actually recommend gold as an asset to invest. But uh, if you wish to trade it, uh, then definitely because I mean it, it is extremely extremely susceptible to uh, such uh, market manipulations, and uh, also uh, there are a lot of smart traders looking into gold at this point of time. And and what it really is is that you know the the ones who stand to reap the most. Uh, are those who are able to recognize uh, a shift in price movement. Uh, but at the same time, I also like to discuss uh, you know, another scenario. If we go back in time, if you guys have been on Twitter and uh, you've been following uh, MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy, um, what's his name again? One of you may want to comment below and remind me the name of the guy from MicroStrategy. Um, but um, he is... Uh, I, he was known to have made a huge purchase uh, of BTC even before uh, the price moved up and even as it was declining. And, you know, some people in, in the markets were wondering, you know, why that is. Well, uh, it's actually quite simple because, like, it's only when people are selling that people can buy. Because if... Uh, you know, if there's no one selling, how are you going to buy? So, depending on the amounts that you wish to to purchase, I mean, it's kind of the same as you know, if you go to a grocery store, if you want to buy, say, uh, a carton of, of oranges, well, um, you know, that that might not be much of a problem. If you want to buy ten oranges, not a problem at all. If it's in season, especially. But let's say if you want to buy, like, you know. 50 cartons or let's say a truckload of oranges what's going to probably happen is that 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 grocery store is going to tell you um you gotta place an advance order for that i might even need a deposit because what happens if we bring the stock in and you don't buy it um or say you know if if uh like why would you want to sell this oranges at a discount because everyone uh everyone wants to come and buy oranges every day anyway so why we want to uh, you know, sell this to you and, and make less. So un the unfortunate truth for that is that, you know, um, 
the big players have to accumulate when the price is weakening. So, uh, in other words, this is what you may have heard of as buying the dips. So, uh, a lot of the big players buy into these dips like Lunar Foundation, like uh, MicroStrategy, like I mentioned, even like uh, Tesla uh, and, and uh, um, Elon Musk himself as, a, as an individual. All right. Now, we look into supply and demand. Uh, market direction is set uh, according to change in supply and demand. Price moves up when it exceeds supply and it comes down. Okay, we already know that. Um, okay, volume. Price action is not alone enough to... Uh, okay, we already went through this. Uh, time frames. Traders can move to a lower time frame to predict the perfect trading entry. The ultimate target is to open a price position once the accumulation is over and a sell position once the distribution is over. Okay, so for retail traders, this is exactly what we do. Because when we recognize a big shift, like I just said a couple moments ago, we see a big shift happening, that's where we go bang right into it. And then we, you know, like in, in this channel, I have probably mentioned the, uh, the, the fish analogy as well, where when we try to eat a fish, um, I mean, how many of you out there seriously eat the whole fish? When I say whole fish, I mean including the head and the tail. No, right? Most people, I mean, for, for me myself, I, I love fish head, but um, a lot of people find that a lot of inconvenience to eat. And a lot of people just go for the body portion of it because that's the bulk of the movement. So um, for most retail traders, you want to look at when the movement is, is, is started, and then you want to get in, recognize that really early and, and go for it. Like uh, if, if you're looking at the gold market today or gold market yesterday, we actually see such opportunities where it's waiting to break out. Uh, there's an indicator on the, um, the uh, trading view that, I, that is called PSAR-X, Parabolic SAR-X. Check that out. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you in a moment. Uh, I'll just come back, come back to that later. Okay, uh, next let's go into the composite man concept. Okay. Uh, composite man is a hypothetical person who has the capacity to move the price. Uh, okay, but let me, let me just summarize this. Okay, the composite man is like, okay, if, if the, it's more like kind of putting your consciousness into the market. Or, like let's say if the market is a consciousness, trying to be part of that consciousness and trying to think um, what is, um, you know, what what is the the uh, objective uh, right now? So you see, uh, traders who know the composite man sentiment can survive the game and remain profitable. And the, the composite man is known as a whale. Uh, and I would also like to encourage you to go on a Twitter and follow a couple of uh, Twitter uh, accounts that are pertaining to whale trades. Whale trades could be for crypto, could also be for Forex. And the interesting thing is this, okay, what these whale trades are, they are bots that uh, aggregate and report uh, the big uh, changes of hands that happen in the market every day. And regardless of whether it is uh, going up or going down, there are still big volume buys. And that's actually something very, very interesting to note. Okay, the planning stage, the composite man is brilliant. He knows how to trap retail invest, uh, traders in his campaign. Um, he starts the game by attracting people to build to buy crypto assets, and when he's already accumulated by um, making many transactions in the range, um, he's able to. You see, we can believe that only smart traders could catch the composite man's trap to find the opportunity to make profits from the beginning phase of a movement. Okay, then there's the accumulation phase. Uh, in, institutional traders build orders and slowly gain powers that take the price higher. Slowly is a keyword here. It cannot happen too fast. Why? Because if it happens too fast, what's going to happen is that there'll be people selling against the buys. Uh, and I have uh, some very uh, you know, seasoned um, friends in the crypto trading uh, area and <clears throat> they, they always recommend let's say, especially if it's, say, an altcoin, um, do a series of small buys. Do not do a big buy because people are going to sell against you. Uh, you don't want to be 
the green candle that 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 people would be you know um, offloading against. So uh, the composite man aims to accumulate orders before starting his final move. Okay. So traders closely monitor this phase and find a suitable buying position using that price, action, and volume. So um, I, I may have to do this. I, I think it's time that I need to go to the chart. So let me do that right now. Okay, I'm right here at the Bitcoin chart and Bitcoin has just come back above 38,000. Okay, this is the PSR indicator and uh, you see PSR X. Okay, I want to show you how to find it. This, when you go to indicators and you search for PSR X. Okay, this is the, the one right here, Rafael Zioni. That is the one. Okay, so um, what's, uh, I, I'm going to back out into maybe like a 30 minute. And uh, what I want you to observe here is, you know, a period of, um, uh, you know, decreasing uh, swing lengths. And interestingly as well, uh, a higher low than the previous low in this area as well. So that's something I'd like you to take notice of. And also in the GBP um, USD, okay, we've been following this for some time. And I also want you to uh, take notice that in the past couple of days, um, there has been, you know, very strong buying of the dips uh, against the cells as well. And if I were to go into a 5 or 15 minute, okay, uh, we can see, you know, how frequently the, the selling pressure is being overpowered by the buying pressure again. And, um, you know, at this point, at these points of time, uh, retail traders could be thinking like, um, well, you know, uh, since it came back to this much, let's just get out. All right, we're going to cut loss and get back out. And uh, unfortunately, that's exactly what the composite man wants you to think because they want you to um, basically give up uh, some of those positions. And, 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 and that way, the institutional traders can buy in in larger amounts. Uh, and then eventually, you know, when a big price movement happens, uh, that's when the retail traders should, should be jumping on board. But uh, I mean, the institutionals, yes, they can do that too. But um, I mean, they may or may not be able to to get the the uh, the required amounts back then. And before long, um, you know, the price would have moved too much. And with the 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 further price movement it has gone then uh, the, the greater a risk that they would have to take, especially those doing it on leverage. Um, then the other thing I wanted to point out with regards to, to, to this, okay, let me just uh, zoom out. Come on. Just a moment. Okay, the other thing I wanted to point out uh, over here is, okay, I think I need to switch this to the hourly for that. Okay, we see that the price has uh, actually like bottomed out, and ever since, ever since this point, you know, it, it has been uh, literally a very uh, a very different uh, sentiment in the markets. And notice that uh, despite the the uh, you know the price is now kind of uh, constant, uh, but the volumes are still very very high. All these are the volume bars right here. And uh, like what's happening uh, is is that you know when 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 this this is where what people call as a a bear bear trap, um, like you know people are thinking that the bear market is going to continue, and and uh, that's when you know people would be uh, doing some additional liquidations, but at, at the same time people are buying up. So this this would tend tend to happen for a period of time, until uh, you know the people who really want to accumulate have accumulated enough, and uh, this could be also helped uh, by a lot of uh, fud in the market. So um, what what is fud? Okay, fud is the uh, what fear, uncertainty, and and uh, doubt that uh, you know market makers love to to create, and. We, we would tend to notice um, very conflicting news in the in the uh, <coughs> data feed 
you can even look at FX Street. Like one moment you see that oh, it's it's like, like all like hell and damnation, and the next moment it's like salvation. You know, um, it's very very ironic. So um, we have very very conflicting news that pops up from time to time. I will I'll probably uh, find some of those um, screenshots uh, if I can. Uh, but I mean, this is just something I want, wanted to point out. Let me just uh, try and do that right now. Okay, these are just some of the various um, like headlines that you can see uh, for the Euro USD, for instance. So, um, and it's funny because within minutes or hours of each other, sometimes we could have very, very conflicting piece of news. These are not actually the most conflicting ones that I've come across, but um, like, you know, I, I have, I have, I, I would suggest that you go to FX Street, for instance, and then um, if they ask you if you would like to uh, enable notifications, enable notifications and you will see uh, some of these, some of these um, headlines are just, you know, there to gaslight you as an investor. So uh, with that, uh, let's head back into, uh, you know, the previous topic. Wake up use daily high, low and closing price to create a series of price charts. And this objective is to determine where the market is heading. Uh, in this method, the trend is an important element. It shows where the broad market is going. And uh, smart traders need to follow the footsteps of the composite man towards the broader market trend. There are three possible trends. Up, down, or flat. Obviously, up is when you make a series of higher highs. And uh, you know, down is when you make a series of lower lows. And flat is flat. And then there is the sell-off phase. Uh, sell-off phase, we've seen this happen in gold many times as well. So, uh, smart investors should avoid buying trades from a sell-off stage or to close their buys before the sell-off starts. So, uh, that is, uh, you know, what is typically known as greed because a lot of people, they will tend to have very high expectations for a particular asset class. Like, uh, they'll be like, oh, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to sell Bitcoin until it hits 44. Um, but you know, what if the what if there's already a, uh, a distribution that is going to start at forty one, and the thing is that by uh, foregoing the opportunity to sell at forty one, uh, you're waiting for forty four, and what ha what happened is that you have to wait for one more cycle. One more cycle means that maybe you bought at thirty eight, went up to forty one, but unfortunately, it it di distribution was there and it distributed back to thirty eight, and you have to wait again for it to come back up to forty one beyond. All right. Okay, well, week off accumulation schematics. Uh, the price remains sideline for range bound trading after a strong downtrend. Okay, this is what happened uh, with the a lot of the assets right now, a lot of the so called risk assets. I, 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 my personal viewpoint of this upcoming Fed uh, is that there could be a, a, a great swing because even uh, if you guys go read about uh, like Fed rate hikes, um, you will realize that um, with all kinds of rate hikes, it's really about striking a, a fine balance between uh, like supporting the economy and uh, controlling inflation. And, and what that can, can do is, I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard to, to keep the industry happy and at the same time to, to um, you know, uh, keep the population uh, like able to, to, to sustain as well. So... Uh, at a certain point, uh, we could see that you know that there could be a disagreement uh, with the result. So this is when uh, a, have you ever seen a, a time when a news that is supposed to be good for a currency turned out to be bad for it instead? Okay, that's that's what that's what uh, I I want you to to consider about. Okay, so there are six stages in the accumulation phase, um, and they include the preliminary support. So the preliminary support appears after a long bearish trend. So you can look at the various pairs: Euro USD, Pound USD, uh, GBP. No, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. I mean, what? Bitcoin, USD, uh, US Tech. Okay, let, let's just go to the trading view for that. Okay, we we'll go to, to the to the chart. I uh, want you to notice. Okay, it's happening all across, right? Um, let's go into. Aussie, all right. Look, look at that. It's finally pulled above the uh, PSR, and uh, you know it's 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 
is gaining gaining some firm footing, um, as with Ethereum, um, US Tech. US Tech was briefly below twelve, believe briefly below thirteen thousand, and is is far its way back above. Okay, uh, we look at gold. Okay, it's fighting above the the low as well. So, this on the other hand, uh, and right from the top. All these is distribution, okay, like heavy distribution. And now uh, we're actually like um, so-called like accumulating um, for for a, um, a markup very, very soon. Okay, back into this. So uh, there is a primary support at this point. And then uh, this is when I commence a lot of my videos on the pound USD case study and at a point of time uh, buyers uh, people think that a selling pressure will end and actually it goes uh, further down uh, <clears throat> from 128 127 went all the way down to 120 close to 124 um, and then that is actually the sell selling climax and at this point of time, uh, actually, if you look at the various assets that I showed you just now, it looks exactly like this. Um, just just uh, go back this video and you can see US tech, um, even US 30, uh, pound, dollar, euro, dollar, Aussie dollar, all doing the same things. The selling climax. And uh, there's a panic selling phase. And then in the end, it closed uh, very far from the low with a very long wicked candle. We had that as well. And the automatic rally. So what we've seen in the past couple of days is the automatic rally. Uh, this is disastrous for sellers uh, because people who have gone in too late, they're going to get uh, killed. Um, and there's a secondary test. The secondary test is known to freak out a lot of people. Uh, this, this is also the reason why I, I say that you know, uh, in your trading, don't. Uh, although you know you have all these accounts, five hundred to one, thousand to one, three thousand to one, don't need to use all that leverage. Uh, use it instead to keep your margin fresh for other opportunities. That should be a proper way to use your margin. Um, this is a secondary test, and the secondary test uh, can be, uh, uh, you know, a, a bit scary for some of those people who are accumulating. Uh, but the thing is that you know, if you recognize the correct points, because some people uh, like me in in the case study, I also started to accumulate from preliminary support. So secondary test, uh, it go it it goes uh, lower again, but it's controlled. Why is it controlled? Because people are buying in. Okay, and then uh, volume should be higher, and then the spring. What is the spring? Spring is when it just comes up. So last few days we saw a lot of it come up, like uh, uh, EURUSD last few days uh, briefly, you know, get recovered uh, like to one hundred six, uh, and then came back down again. So a lot of the spring, a lot of traders would think, oh, the market is bearish, and they start to sell, and then. What this really is is that uh, it's like a shakeout. Okay, a shakeout is to to eliminate uh, you know the weak hands, not really weak hands, but people who are not so sure what they're doing and uh, not really vibing with the whole market psychology and and uh, they're just getting off the game. And finally, we have the uh, accumulation schematic. So uh, it it could actually just you know go up and down uh, and followed by a few more springs and then you know it just just uh, takes off the markup. Okay. So once accumulation is over, it will move sharply higher as demand will exceed support. And uh, for those people who have been averaging and getting in at the correct times, imagine at, uh, at the sudden climax, if the, uh, if the secondary test uh, you are buying in, uh, then new support you are buying in. Um, like Notice that these higher supports really happen because of a uh, new equilibrium uh, cause and effect. Okay. So the reverse is true 
with the uh, distributed schematic and I, I think I do not need to to explain that uh, too much you guys can look into that um, and I but at the same time I want to draw your attention to last point of supply when some people a lot of people see last point of supply a lot of people will often uh, think that oh you know we're gonna go for the next level um, but this is when it's very wise to you know have uh, targets on on your your PL because like you know um, the the reason why the bull run does not go sustain um, like sometimes it defies logic sometimes it does not and the reason for that is because institutional traders they have uh, very set uh, profit targets so it does not go too long drawn and in fact uh, at the last point of uh, supply if you miss it then it's basically gone okay so um, I think these other uh, ones you can read about it yourself uh, or maybe I'll read I'll, I'll do like a second part of this video but I think there's a lot to think about in this one and I think this is probably you know one of the the uh, well it's, it's been quite a while since I've done a content piece like this so I really appreciate uh, uh, your time to watch this video from start to end and uh, do leave me some uh, likes and comments down below if you found this useful